Okay, so for this series of lectures, uh, we're going to be looking at lung mechanics. Uh, I'll start off looking at how the muscles actually uh, interact to, for breathing in and out, and uh, how the chest changes. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'll talk about uh, just like different measures of the volumes of the lung and uh, all the abbreviations that come along with that. Uh, so to start off with lung mechanics, it's kind of divided into two different um, divisions, two different areas. So there's static lung mechanics, and there's dynamic lung mechanics. So with static lung mechanics, what you're looking at is you're kind of looking at um, how changes in the chest wall volume, changes in pressure, um, muscle contraction, and how those all play interplay um, to basically determine how what's, what's the max volume that your uh, chest can be, what's the smallest you can make it, right? So for for max inspiratory and max uh, expiratory volumes, um, what's interplaying there for that? So it's called static because it basically just looks at, so like if you're breathing in all the way, what kind of forces are pulling the chest wall outwards and what's pulling it inwards, right? So it's in static uh, motion. Uh, for dynamic, what you're looking at is more the airflow. So it, it, it's kind of determined by the strength that the muscles can contract. Um, the resistance that of the airflow. Um, so as you increase the speed of the air, it ends up being more turbulent, right? So that creates resistance. Uh, you can change the uh, diameter of um, the airway. There's all sorts of things that actually affect dynamics. So those will be in uh, future lectures where we kind of look at static and dynamic. Um, so for now, let's look at um, how the chest actually changes to uh, change the volume of the lungs. So basically, you can change all three dimensions. Um, there's the vertical, there's an anterior, posterior, and then there's the lateral positions, right? So the vertical will be the diaphragm contracting, which increases the length of the chest. Um, so that's the diaphragm. Uh, the anterior, posterior, uh, that will actually be the upper rib cage, because the rib cage is kind of angled downwards, as you raise it, it'll increase the anterior posterior. So from front, front to back, will actually increase in size. So that's um, the upper ribs. And then the lateral one is ribs uh, two to 10, because um, there, as they get lifted up too, they, they kind of stretch outwards, and that actually increases the lateral position. So that's ribs 2 to 10. Okay, so to start off with the anterior posterior, if I draw the spine here, so this is kind of like the spine. Okay, and then we got the ribs attached to the, the vertebrae in the back, and they're actually kind of angled downwards. So they're kind of angled like this. the sternum here okay and because they're kind of angled downwards when the external um, intercostals actually contract they pull the sternum up and that's what causes uh, the increase in anterior posterior position so that increases in size and so that effect because it's kind of it's just a lever like this is called uh, the water pump handle Now, at the same time, because the ribs are kind of curved outwards like this, right? When you lift it up, so it actually pulls the thing outwards too. So uh, ribs 2 to 10 will increase laterally. So that's how the lateral part. So that's all determined by, it's usually just the external intercostals that are contracting that pull it up. Um, so for the diaphragm, the diaphragm will be down here, it's kind of angled like this, and it attaches, and it's a dome, and when the muscle all contracts, it's pulling this center part down, and that's what increases uh, the vertical distance.
Um, so now looking at all the muscles involved in, uh, and oh yeah, and so the lateral position is called the water bucket handle. Okay, so now, uh, so I'll start off by talking about inspiration. So with inspiration, you basically have you have the diaphragm, it contracts, contracts, and you have usually the external intercostals. So just with normal breathing, you have those, um, so this is for the vertical, and this is for uh, anterior, posterior, and the lateral. So that's just for general breathing. Um, on exertion, what you'll have is you'll actually have uh, the scalene muscles and the sternoclomastoid muscles. Sternoclidomastoid. What they will do is so they're they're up here, right? They contract and they also pull the rib cage up, which will help increase the anterior posterior position. Um, and so that's so they contract uh, during exertion. And then what you can also have is um, with really high exertion is uh, you can have the airways open up. So that'd be uh, smooth muscles in uh, the larynx, the pharynx, pharynx, and uh, the nasal passages. So that's what happens with inspiration. With expiration. What you have is, uh, it's normally just passive, actually, for expiration. So, if you think about it, right, um, the rib cage is already up, right, so it wants to go down, and uh, this diaphragm's contracted, so if you let the diaphragm relax, it'll go back into this upward position, and the rib cage will come down, and so that's how you breathe out, it actually forces out the air because the chest is contracting on it. Um, and so this is actually, it's kind of done in like a controlled manner where the muscles slowly ease up. So it's actually quite uh, smooth. Like if they just relax completely, the air would rush out pretty quick. Um, if you do need to breathe out faster uh, on exertion, you can contract, you have the intercostals, uh, the inner intercostals, and they're actually running the other direction like this. They contract uh, and they can breathe it out quickly. So you got the internal intercostals and then you also have um, if you got to breathe quickly um, and you want this diaphragm to raise up fast uh, you can have your abdominal muscles here they can contract inwards right that increases the pressure so the pressure goes up which pushes up so you can have your abdominal muscles contract too so that's how you breathe in and breathing out. Um, you might wonder why are the external intercostals kind of like running this way? They're running this way. And the internals are running, um, running that way. So if you think, if they're running, if the externals are running this way, right, along, and they have to, when they contract, they want to shorten up. So what they're wanna, gonna do is they're going to want to slide this way, so that pulls the rib cage up. So as it goes, it pulls it up. If you think uh, running the other way, if you pull to pull it like this, you can't pull the rib cage together, right? So as it contracts, it kind of pulls it inwards and pulls it down. And so that's why the internals uh, pull it inward. Um, I don't know if that really makes sense, but it's kind of how I understand it. Okay, so moving on to the actual all these abbreviations. So if you look here, uh, what I got drawn here is I basically got drawn, uh, you got the normal breath, so this is breathing, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. And then you take a deep breath in, deep breath out, and then back to normal. And uh, so basically, when you're normally breathing, you have uh, what it's called is the tidal volume. So that's the tidal volume, breathing in and out, and it's the measure between the resting expiratory volume and the resting inspiratory volume. So you're actually breathing pretty shallowly. There's not that much 
breath. Now, um, from the tidal volume, if you take a deep breath in all the way up to the max, 100%, that's the uh, inspiratory reserve volume, okay? Uh, so if you take a deep breath in, if you breathe all your air out, the expiratory reserve, the expiratory reserve volume is the volume below the tidal volume. And if you breathe all the way out, you'll still have, um, I don't know, maybe like 20% of air left in the lungs because you can't get it all out. And that part that you can't ever get out is your residual volume. Um, so if you let your lungs kind of like relax when you're breathing in and out, if you let them relax completely, uh, what you'll get is it'll drop down to the resting respiratory volume. Because remember normally when we're breathing, we're not actually using any muscles to breathe out. So if you just breathe out normally and just relax, that's just it's stationary, uh, no muscles are involved at the time. And so that is the functional residual capacity. So that's basically what you're at um, when you breathe out all the way without using any force. And then so from there you can take a deep breath in all the way and uh, so that's your inspiratory capacity. Um, if you measure the complete amount of air that you can breathe in and out, that's the vital capacity and then there's always the residual volume. And then there's basically total lung capacity, so that's the total amount of air that you can breathe in and out.